Boop. Happy Monday. Today is Monday, October the 19th, 2020, and our daily Bible readings for day come to us from Psalm 63, 1 through 8, Exodus 40, 34 through 38, Revelation 18, 1 through 10, and 19 through 20. Or you could have read Psalm 98, Daniel 3, 1 through 18, and then Revelation 18, 1 through 10, and 19 through 20. And I'm going to look at the passage from Revelation 18. And uh, we're going to talk about Babylon the Great. Now, um, what is John talking about? John the Revelator here, right? What is he talking about when he talks about Babylon the Great? Well, who is this? Um, it's not specifically Babylon, right? Like, it's he's not talking about the specific city of Babylon uh, and especially not talking about Babylon the city today because they don't really exist. It's that empire, the Babylonian empire, would have been in the area where the country of Iraq is right now. Um, so who's he talking about? Well, by his time, that really wasn't a big issue. He's using language to refer to the enemy of God or the the oppressor of God's people. So let me put it this way. He's referring rather to an earthly power that kind of sets itself against the power and the sovereignty of God, the authority of God. Um, so in John's day, specifically, this would have been Rome. Um, and that's the empire that he was living in and dealing with. That's the world power that controlled the stage. Um, so for us, that's harder to say. It's not really, you can't kind of point at any one power. Um, I know that a lot of people do that. I kind of don't advise you to. But I think you can realize that the danger lies in the kind of um, distraction and sin that she, Babylon, fallen Babylon, represents in comparison to the, the city of God that John talks about throughout here, the New Jerusalem, right? Um, so he talks about her sins are heaped up high, right? Um, so, and he says that God has remembered her iniquities. So what are, were these iniquities? What kind of, what kind of empire, what kind of power is this Babylon, fallen Babylon that John is complaining about and talking about and talking and saying that God is going to punish her? Well, um, in 18.7, we kind of get a clue. Doesn't In this passage, doesn't go into great specifics about it, but uh, gives us an idea. And I'm kind of going to read this passage, this verse, backwards. First of all, starting at the end of 18.7, he says, um, he says, So give her like measure of torment and grief. This is an idea about what kind of power this is and what effect it had on the world. The kind of effect it wrought on the people that lived in the world it this is a this is a power a power that causes torment and grief this is very different than what god promises this is a power that that kind of grinds people up and crushes them under the wheels of its empire of its power that's that's what god is remembering and god is promising to give back to this fallen babylon um and then the first half of that passage of the of verse 18 7 really says that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously in other words so this uh fallen babylon the problem with babylon is that she has made herself wealthy at the expense of others she has lifted herself up about above god she has set herself a, against god and against god's creation in other words um, everything that she has, the luxury that she lives in, and the luxury that she promises to other people if they were to follow her and follow her way, all comes at the cost and the expense of God's creation and God's children. That's the kind of city that Babylon represents. That's the kind of power, earthly power, that this, this Babylon represents. And it's, um, it's a fallen economy, really. It's uh, it's, he's talking about this kind of world economy that's built on the sufferings of others. Um, and so God is going to tear it down. That's the promise that John is giving to the people that he's addressing in this apocalyptic literature, which that's a, probably a good thing that I brought that word up. I wasn't meaning to originally, but apocalyptic literature is means that it means to reveal, right? Uh, I won't go into the Greek for that. Uh, you're welcome. 
but it means that it's revealing. And this type of literature, apocalyptic literature, which is what the book of Revelation is, uh, the, you notice the other readings for today were from Daniel. A good chunk of Daniel has some apocalyptic literature in it. It's literature written to a specific group, a specific community that's undergoing very specific stresses and persecutions, and it's written in, to address those problems and to give reassurance to that community that God is still with them and that God will work all this out. And it's also written in such a way that the power to which it is being addressed, right, the oppressive power, the worldly power, the power of evil, um, isn't directly named so that they don't come after you. Because if they, you can say, well, I was talking about Babylon. That's an empire that ceased to exist generations ago, right? Uh, because if you're living in the middle of Rome, uh, the, of the Roman Empire, which John was, he was on the Isle of Patmos, which wasn't a good place to be. Um, you can look that up. Uh, you don't want to just go out naming Rome. So that's the kind of thing that he's dealing with. He's trying to show the people that are living under this kind of oppressive uh, power that God is with them, that God will have the last say, and that God is remembering all the iniquities, all the sins, uh, is heaping up against this fallen Babylon that is constantly persecuting his new Jerusalem. So that's a real quick thumbnail sketch based on chapter 18 of what goes on in the book of Revelation. Uh, have a good day, have a good afternoon, and we will see you tomorrow for another DBR. Boop.